Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello and welcome to Glomus. Um, today's video is one that I'm really excited about. I'm excited to go through this again just because it's a fun video. I did a video a couple of months ago where I just talked about how luxury brands have like absolutely lost their minds and basically just went through a bunch of luxury websites and talked about the insane stuff that they're selling for insane prices. It was kind of a little spin-off of one of my friends on YouTube, Nisa. She does these amazingly funny videos where she window shops. It's a little bit of a spin-off on that, but instead of talking about like horrific clothing from Shein, it's like $1,200 ski goggles from Louis Vuitton. I just think it's fun to go through and talk about just sort of the insanity of some of the pricing of these things. And honestly, I wanted to do this again for the holiday time because most luxury websites I've noticed do have a little option where it's like a gift and you can pick like for him, for her, for children. Gucci has a for pet section. I feel like you find some of the most insane things on the gifting part of the websites. I feel like that's where I find the nuttiest, craziest stuff that you just like would never believe actually exists. Um, so today we're going to go through a few luxury brands and we're going to show what they are telling you to buy your loved ones for the holiday season. Hope you guys are going to like this one. I hope you'll get a laugh out of it the same way that I did while finding all of these things. And yeah, let's jump into it. The first store I wanted to go to was Louis Vuitton. I feel like in my last video, I think I talked about a couple of things from Louis Vuitton, but I, I actually don't remember if I talked about them at all because sometimes they have really weird stuff, but other times it's like just random clothing and bags that are super expensive, not necessarily like crazy stuff. Um, but when I was perusing their website this time, especially their gifting website, I specifically noticed a ton of stuff from their website that was just bonkers. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this $2,200 teddy bear. Now, the interesting thing about this bear that caught my eye is there's a couple of things. Number one, I actually know about this bear because of TikTok. Um, I remember watching a TikTok I don't remember how long ago it was, but I was watching a TikTok about these Louis Vuitton teddy bears and it was talking about how the Kardashians have a bunch of them for their children. I don't know about you, okay? I like, I don't have any kids. Um, however, I did work in daycare and <laughs> I can safely say there is not a child alive that would not absolutely destroy this teddy bear. I remember when I worked in daycare, we would have parents come in and buy their kids like Jordans, like little baby Jordans, which are very, very cute, but they grew out of them in like literally three seconds, especially the newborn babies. For toddlers, I at least understood it a little bit more, but the newborns would grow out of them in like three seconds and you would look, they're like $60, like little sneakers, or they'd have like little Nike onesies that were like 20 bucks each. And I'm like, that's crazy. So I already thought that was bonkers. Now we're talking about a $2,200 teddy bear for your baby slash toddler slash child. I feel like there's no way that the rich people who are buying this are actually allowing their children to utilize and play with this bear, right? Like there's not a chance Kylie Jenner is like giving her child Stormy this bear to play with. There's no way. There's no way. I don't care how rich you are. You're not rich enough to spend $2,200 on what seems to be a kind of exclusive teddy bear. Like it seems like these are hard to get because they come out during the holidays. They're always a little bit different. They're like kind of limited edition, which is why I think people who are really big into stuff like Louis Vuitton, i.e incredibly rich people um, are able to buy these things and then sort of save them as like collector's items, I would imagine. But it's so strange to me because this was under the Louis Vuitton gifts for kids. 
And I'm just like, no person, no matter how rich, I don't care if you're like Jeff Bezos rich, there is not a chance that you are buying this $2,200 bear to realistically give to a child for them to like put it in their mouth and destroy it. There's just not a chance that that's happening. And if you're buying it for just the sole purpose of like displaying it in your child's room, I also think that that's super weird. You can judge me if you want. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like my parents got me an American Girl doll when I was a kid. And I remember I had a Molly doll. I destroyed that doll. Absolutely destroyed her. Her hair, a uh, rack. I'm pretty sure I cut her hair at one point, but I played with it. Like it was this very expensive doll. Obviously I didn't know that at the time. It was this very expensive doll that I was obsessed with and I got so much use out of and played with. But looking back, I'm like, wow, I could have done that with any doll. Whereas my sister, she had a Samantha doll. Hers is still in freaking pristine condition. She could probably sell it for like thousands of dollars because it's like a 1990s Samantha American Girl doll. She never played with it and hers is still in perfect condition and it's like looks great. However, at what cost? You had no fun with that doll. All you did was stare at it. I told, I talked to her about this all the time. I'm like, all you do is stare at that doll and like talk about how pretty she looks. There's no fun in that. There's no games in that. That's not a exciting. That's kind of the equivalent. I feel like for rich people with this Louis Vuitton teddy bear would be the equivalent of getting like an American girl doll when you were a child. Okay. This one was very fun to me. This is, it's not the bag that I'm talking about in this photo. This is a for her gift. So this is a gift you could get, um, the lucky lady in your life. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. This is a $520 blooming key holder. What I loved about this one in particular and why I really wanted to talk about it was not even because it's like a very expensive keychain because that's literally what it is. It's a $520 keychain, which again, to me, practicality is crazy because I don't know about anyone else. I have a lot of keychains. I have like a decent amount. Um, I would have had more if all of them hadn't have fallen off, like literally fallen off of my key holder. I feel like stuff breaks like this all the time, especially if you really look at where this is. This little thing looks nice, but like this chain, that's gonna break. So barring the fact that you're buying a $500 keychain, um, that's just gonna break. The reason I picked this one to talk about is because I love that in the luxury world, you can't call things what they are. I love that it's always like a key holder, not a keychain. A keychain, that sounds too mainstream. That's too poor. We're key holders and that's why this is important. The only thing that is so weird about this one to me is that I know that Louis Vuitton has little like key pouches. And those actually make a little bit of sense to me. Like the key pouches make sense to me because it's like something you put on your keys that you can put cards or cash in. It's basically like a little wallet attached to your keys. The key pouch makes sense to me. It's still a glorified keychain, but at least it has a purpose. This is a $520 piece of plastic that just says Louis Vuitton. Go on Etsy. I know I'm not supposed to like talk about this because like it's bad, but like there are Etsy creators I know who create like LV inspired things. And you could literally get this, like especially this like circle thing with the LV, 20 bucks. <laughs> which is frankly how much they should be selling it for because I can guarantee it does not cost them more than pennies to make this product. Um, but yeah, this is the key holder, not the keychain. These people are rich, they're key holders. Okay, next we have a $2,900 jewelry box. I guess if you're buying this for someone, like a loved one, um, you probably have already bought them way more than $2,900 worth of jewelry. Like there's no way that you're buying this like very industrial looking case that's $3,000 um, and you haven't also bought them a very expensive piece of jewelry to put inside of it. However, the problem I have with this one, not even the problem, obviously the price. The problem I have is the price. Problem I have with this one is that it really does not look big. Like I would assume that this is kind of for a travel purpose. I feel like I see a lot of the Louis Vuitton like trunk stuff in terms of like traveling and everything like that. That's always what I've seen from them with these trunk style things. They have this like soft clothes, whatever. And you can see here, it does have like a little tray that you take out and then there's something underneath that you could lay flat. But overall, this doesn't seem like a lot of storage. And not only that, it doesn't really have any like proper 
jewelry storage like just from a practicality perspective i have a jewelry box that i bought for literally like ten dollars that i use for travel but that has like a little pouch that i could put hoop earrings in and it has that little piece that has all the holes in it so if you have earrings you can put your studs in there they're not going to get all mixed up it has a special little holder for necklaces so that way they're not getting all tangled while you're traveling like this while aesthetically i like the inside i think it is kind of cute like the light pink is very pretty so aesthetically this is fine but like in practice if you're using this genuinely to travel with there's no rhyme or reason to how you're supposed to be storing things and there's no way to store things so they don't get all messed up. You'd think for how much you're spending, $3,000, it would have this sort of like insert inside of it that would make it so it actually organizes your jewelry. But by looking at the pictures, your jewelry, like if you look at this one, first of all, I love the poorly photoshopped image of this picture. The fact that this is all very obviously Louis Vuitton jewelry that they just photoshopped onto this box is so fucking funny to me. They're like, pay $3,000 for this product, but we can't pay to have proper photos taken so that way you can actually see to scale what your jewelry is going to look like. If you look here, like this little necklace is just like strewn about the top of it. The earrings are free balling. The bottom part, that jewelry, if you have more than one necklace in there, enjoy untangling your very expensive necklaces that you're putting in this $3,000 box. It makes no sense to me. I think practically this one pisses me off because it's like you really for $3,000 couldn't even put the little thingy in there. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the flat thing that you, it has holes in it and you stick your earrings through it. You couldn't do that <laughs> for $3,000. You couldn't do that. Okay. Okay. Again, this one, at least it doesn't piss me off so much because of like practicality. Like this at least has a storage for what you're doing. What pisses me off about this watch case is that it's fucking $8,000. It's literally $8,000. Like, and like, I love that they do all the close-ups to show how like well-crafted this trunk is. And I did a video on Louis Vuitton and their trunks are kind of like where they started. They're what they're known for. They're very popular. I get that people love a Louis Vuitton trunk. Eight thousand dollars to store eight watches in a very 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 small trunk my favorite thing is looking at how big these things are okay so this is 13 inches no way 13 inches long seven inches high and four inches in width there's no way this is four inches in width that wouldn't hold any watches. This part is four inches. So you have 13, seven inches tall, four inches long. So this is like this big, right? These things are always so much smaller than you think they are. Jesus, I don't even know if eight watches could fit in there. Maybe like tiny ones, certainly not a big blinged out Rolex, which I would assume you have if you're spending $8,000 on a fucking watch case. <laughs> oh my God. You know, if you're just looking for that special someone in your life, a great gift for them is an $8,000 watch case. Perfect. Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my New Year's resolutions is to start working out more. And if you have someone in your life like me who wants to work out more, do I have the gift for you? It is $2,600 dumbbells. What is two kilograms? Hold on, four pounds. They're four pound dumbbells for 2,600, let's round up, $2,700. And also I think the funny part about these for me is that they're made, it's a, they're luxury. Um, so they have like epi leather handles, which they say make them resistant to perspiration marks. I would make the argument that the last thing I wanna feel on sweaty hands is epi leather. <laughs> like that's just, that's just the absolute, any leather. The last thing I wanna feel when I'm all sweaty and gross and I'm trying to use my thirty my $2,600 dumbbells is leather. You know what else is resistant to perspiration? Um, metal, which is what normal dumbbells are made out of. <laughs> like also the crazy part about this is that there's no way that this is actual gold. Like the sides of it are actual gold. There's just no way that that's what that's made of. So this is probably like gold plated. So it's, you know, silver or whatever with like a gold spray paint. 
Also, they're just ugly. Wait, hold on. Barring, like, the fact that that's gonna chip and, like, look super ugly, and the leather is gonna get super gross because you're gonna be sweating on it because leather is not water resistant, no matter what leather it is. Barring all of that, these are just fucking ugly. Like, this is not even a cute little weight. I remember at least the YSL ones, they were, like, sleek and they looked kind of cool. This literally looks like what Louis Vuitton resellers make in order to like try to make something look like Louis Vuitton. Like this light pink with the fake golds and like the LV wrapped around the edges in leather. Who makes weights out of leather? This whole thing, <laughs> this whole thing is just so stupid. I don't understand it. Should I buy them? <laughs> I'll be like, mom, Merry Christmas. Um, I knew you simply wanted like a new hair dryer, but instead I got you these 4.4 pound dumbbells that are made of leather lunacy absolute lunacy okay next this one i this one's kind of funny <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry this one did make me chuck i'm not gonna buy it nor do i think anyone should buy this because it's literally like a porcelain cup with a louis vuitton koozie on it um they should just sell the koozie honestly people would probably buy that koozie absolutely they're gonna sell it for way too much but i bet people would buy the koozie the reason i thought this was genuinely funny is that on the cup, they have it written, like it says Louis, like Louis Vuitton. So like, you know, at Starbucks, they write your name on the cup. Although I never get my name written on my cup. Although I never go inside, I always go, th that's besides the point, sorry. Sidetracked, um, I just feel like I never get that moment where they're like, Hannah, I never get that. Um, anyway, I do think that it's objectively funny that they have the name Louis written on this cup. I'm sorry. I do think that's kind of funny and a little bit clever. I do like when luxury brands are a little on the nose with things. Like I remember a couple of years ago, Gucci came out with this Gucky collection because they were mocking the sort of resellers who make their same products but change the name slightly. So they made their own collection that just said Gucky. Objectively, it was ugly and overpriced, but I like when brands are on the nose. Like I like when they're a little bit funny about things. I think that this is genuinely funny. It is a porcelain cup with a silicone lid, again, with the leather, this like leather koozie that just says Lewis. Also, I don't know about you, this Louis Vuitton print, sometimes I think the Louis Vuitton print is kind of cute. Like I see some bags and I'm like, that's cute. I don't know what they did with the coloring of this particular print where it's like yellow almost underneath. It's like a brown and yellow. Something about it is so unesthetically pleasing to me that I like literally can't take it. It just doesn't make sense to me. I get that people are into this and I try not to yuck people's yum, but a thousand dollars, do you know how many of these little cups I have in my freaking mug cabinet that I bought for like five dollars at Marshall's that say live laugh love those service me just fine nobody needs a one thousand dollar Louis Vuitton porcelain hot cup especially with a freaking silicone lid you've got to be kidding me oh this sleeve is not even leather it's fucking canvas that's why the coloring is so off that makes more sense I was like this isn't even leather it's leather lined but it's canvas that makes more sense okay okay now we're done with Louis Vuitton we're moving on there's so much Louis Vuitton stuff to go through but like we're moving on from that I just talked about that for way too long they just had some good ones this year I was pleasantly surprised next I want to talk about what Gucci thinks you should buy your loved ones for the holidays um first we have this silver toned metal set of two coasters silver to so it's not even real silver it's silver toned Interesting. Uh, this is a set of coasters for 370 fucking dollars. So if you have a friend who just moved into a new home, like maybe a housewarming gift, some silver toned Gucci coasters. The thing about Gucci that's kind of sad to me, like their homeware stuff, is that some of their homeware stuff I actually do think is cute. Like I see the prints and stuff and the patterns that they have. And I'm like, wow, if I saw that at a thrift store for like 20 bucks, I might buy this. Like, this is actually very cute. It's like super aesthetically pleasing. Like I'm, if this was like a pack of six uh, at a thrift shop, I'd buy this, absolutely. However, when you see it in this context of being almost $400 for two little itty bitty coasters, you just can't stomach it. Like Gucci definitely has the audacity a lot of these brands do, but Gucci especially, and I'll tell you where else they have the audacity. It's in this fucking coffee spoon. Oh 
Oh my god. Okay, first of all, if you've been a part of my channel for a while and you've been a subscriber for a while, you know that I hate bees. Um, I have always been very afraid of bees. I very much respect what they do for our ecosystem. However, I have never been stung, so I always have this fear that I'm going to be stung by a bee and be allergic and just not have known it my whole life and die. Um, funny story, back in um, September, um, this <laughs> because this year has been hell. Back in September, I actually got stung by a bee for the very first time in my life. Um, I had a full-blown panic attack, and then once I realized I wasn't dying, took a Benadryl and was fine. So I now no longer, like, hate bees out of fear. Now I just don't like them because it fucking hurt. Everybody was like, bee stings don't hurt, just a little pinch. That was so painful. <laughs> I know I have, like, a mildly low pain tolerance, but that was so painful. It was not fun. Um, anyway, these are coffee spoons, which, uh, do you know how fucking small, do you know how small coffee spoons are? Do you know how tiny a coffee spoon is? Coffee spoons are meant to be so small because they're just meant to put in like a little bit of sugar or like, uh, you know, mix up your cream. The bees sitting on top is kind of a cool detail. I think it's wildly impractical in terms of being a coffee spoon. It serves no purpose and it's just there to look kind of cool. What I really have a problem with is that these tiny little spoons that are meant to be tiny little spoons are $350 for a set of two. For a set of two. They literally sell little wooden sticks that you can stir your coffee with. For a set of two, $350. It's so funny because I'm doing another video um, talking about like the sister squad. I'm doing like an internet history on them. Spoiler alert. Um, for that video, I watched well, all of their collaborations and I remember that one of the Dolan twins bought Emma Chamberlain two Gucci mugs and two Gucci coffee spoons for Secret Santa. And I remember thinking at the time, like, wow, that must have been like a hundred bucks total for like two mugs and some spoons. Cause like it's Gucci, but like that's, that's really expensive for like what it is. Apparently those spoons were 350 fucking dollars which is insane, absolutely insane. The next Gucci item, and I remember I'm pretty sure I talked about the YSL skateboard in my last video. If I didn't, I meant to, but this one is for the skater in your life, the risk taker, the person who just loves to go to the skate park and rip on some pipes. And that sounded like it was a reference to something else and it wasn't, it truly was a skate reference. Anyway, uh, this is for the person in your life who loves to skateboard. Actually, this is for like, if you are a rich billionaire and you have like a nephew who's going to Harvard cause you paid for the library and he like wants to be a skater. He's like a skater bro, but he's like not a skater. He just like smokes weed at skate parks. Um, this is who this is for. This this is a Gucci skateboard. Again, objectively, I don't hate the floral print behind the Gucci. I think it's actually very pretty. I just have never ever in a million years met someone who skateboards who would ever spend this much money on a decorative board. Like, I could imagine if it had some sort of aerodynamic that made it super, it made your half pipes go fat. Like, I could imagine that if that's what you wanted to do. I cannot imagine anyone I know in my life spending this amount of money for what is essentially something that you would like hang up and display as a skateboard. Nobody who actually skates is going to actually buy this and use this. I, unless I guess you're Jeffree Star. I remember he spent like $50,000 on a Supreme skateboard once for his uh, boyfriend at the time. But anyway, you just look at this and it's so impractical if you're actually a skater. They make a point of showing all these details like the bottom of the board and the like wheels being super fancy. But it's like, if you're actually gonna use the skateboard, all of that shit's gonna get ruined in like three seconds. Plus skateboards break all the time. They break so often, they're kind of supposed to break at a certain point. Like the board itself is not the expensive part. It's the wheels and the tracks that are the expensive part of skateboarding. But I feel like for this, what you're paying for is not the wheels and the tracks. You're literally just paying for an expensive piece of plywood that has a Gucci logo on it, that the second you use it is going to get scraped up and rub off and just look stupid. Um, so yeah, don't fully understand the $2,000 Flora skateboard. Um, but I guess if you have a skater bro in your life, 
a recommendation for you. Uh, finally for Gucci, honestly, I, the only reason I put this in is the price. That is like the only reason. I've actually really gotten into chess in the last year. I don't ask, but I've just, it's a whole thing. It's kind of my depression game. Like I have it on my iPad and I just love playing it. It's actually a lot of fun. I've gotten very into it. I want to buy a chess board. I'm actually in the market for a chess board um, because I would love to have like a real one to play with people. Nobody would play with me anyway, but I kind of want a real one. I think it'd be fun to play on a real one. That's besides the point. That's a side tangent. Um, so I'm in the market for one. So mom, if you're watching, here's a great option for a Christmas gift. It is a $10,400 Gucci chessboard for the chess lover in your life. I think the thing about this to me is that number one, the pieces objectively look ugly. It's in this super ugly like Gucci print that looks so awkward and bulky. And then if you look at the actual pieces, they're like birds with hats and owls and snails and horses. That's the one thing they kept the same. It just isn't like they're not like cute little pieces like normal chesses. And I also think too, like if you're buying this, you're obviously buying it to display in your home. That's the only reason I could think anyone would actually buy a $10,000 chessboard. But I do have this funny thing because they make a big deal about the case and the travel case and how you could like bring it with you places. I do have a funny thought in my brain of if anyone watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix, that chess show last year, I do have a funny like scenario in my brain where that girl walks into all of her chess tournaments with this gigantic, atrocious Gucci case and just like slams it on the table. She like pops it open and she sets it up for her chess opponents. I don't know. I just, the, the thought of that is very funny to me of like a professional chess player actually using this thing and lugging it around to competitions and people being like, what the fuck does the rabbit and the snail mean? Because that's not actual chess pieces. I can't imagine spending $10,000. I feel like most of what you're paying for has to be the little carry case. That's gotta be where they got the price from is like this trunk like carrying case, not the actual chess board. But they're calling it a decorative wooden chess board. So why are they making such a big deal about the fact that you can carry it around places? If the whole point is you like set it up on a table. I don't know. Um, it's a mystery to me. It's a mystery to everyone. And that's Gucci. Um, so if you have a chess lover in your life, there you go. All right, next. <laughs> So Gucci specifically has a gift for your dog section, which don't get me wrong, my dogs all have stockings. I buy them gifts every year. I adore my dogs. Like they absolutely get Christmas presents. Uh, unfortunately for Stella this year, one of them will not be a $650 Gucci Sherpa sweater. The reason I really picked this one and the reason that it was so funny to me was number one, look at that dog's face. <laughs> That dog is not having a happy holiday. That dog looks like it's being held fucking hostage. That dog is not happy. I did love that you could buy the matching hat for it. I thought that was very funny. The reason I picked this was number one, I think the Gucci pet section is so fucking funny just because it's absolutely ridiculous. Number two, $650 for this sweater is so funny to me because I actually bought my dog Stella a little coat that looks like this for winter time. Um, and she, number one, absolutely hates it. She turns around and bites all of the fuzzies off and like picks them off and hates them. And then if you have more than one dog, God forbid, they went absolutely bananas on that coat. They loved biting the fuzzies off of this. So that's just like number one. Dogs in general like to chew things and this looks like a chew toy. So I'd essentially be making my dog look like a chew toy for my other dogs to chew on. Number two, $650 is just so crazy. It's so crazy for like a little piece of carpet with some velvet lining and like a gold GG. It's probably not even gold, probably fucking plastic. A plastic GG. It's insane. It's insane. It's lunacy to me. It literally, it cracks me up, honestly, because I just can't imagine spending this much. Dude, this dog is so funny to me. This dog is staring into my fucking soul right now. He's so not in the holiday spirit. He doesn't want to be wearing this. Oh my God, this picture. I like that they tried to make him look like he was like an antique or she. That they, this dog, like an antique like woman. Like they put this filter over it to make it look like an old timey photo. Oh God, yeah, don't buy a, a wool sweater for your dog. Just in general. But also if you don't want your dog to look terrified like this dog, don't do it. The marketing photos just crack me up. Okay, the final 
um, brand we're gonna be talking about is Dior because they did have some stuff. First, I would like to point your attention. Honestly, this doesn't even seem that crazy after looking at some of the other prices. That's the warped thing about these designer brands is this is insane. It's $350 for a 1,000 piece puzzle. But after looking at a $10,000 chess set, I'm like, wow, this is kind of a bargain at this point. Like, man, what a steal, only $350? This is fucking insane. You're spending $350 on cardboard. That's objectively insane. Like that's not, that's not cool. You know, that's not fun, especially for a thousand piece puzzle. They couldn't even make it like a, a 2,500 piece puzzle, something difficult, challenging, that's gonna take time. At least you're paying hourly to play this puzzle. I just think that this is like, I, on a, oh man, I'm actually a little shook because I looked at that price tag and I was like, oh, it's not even that bad compared to everything. But that's how they get you. Everything is so insane that when you see something like this after looking at all of this insane stuff and you wanna buy something luxurious for a, a friend or a family member or a partner, you're like, wow, well after that, that ten thousand dollar chess set, three fifty seems like a fucking bargain for a stupid cardboard puzzle. Dior is actually funny to me because they do a lot of sort of Christmas themed things, unlike other brands. I feel like other brands have stuff that they put out that they put in like their gift category. However, or like Louis Vuitton had that teddy bear, but Dior seems to really care about the holidays, and I'll tell you why. It's because they sell stupidly expensive Christmas ornaments. I think Prada also sells Christmas ornaments. They may not sell them. They might just send them to influencers. I remember last year on TikTok, there was this huge scandal where people thought that people were breaking their Prada uh, Christmas ornaments on purpose because like four different fashion influencers broke their ornaments upon opening them. And everyone thought it was this big scheme by Prada to get people talking about their products more. Honestly, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd believe that that was a marketing ploy. But anyway, Dior also sells these Christmas ornaments. These ones are $650 and they're like, I mean, they're pretty. Don't get me wrong. Again, if I saw that at Home Sense, like I'd be like, oh my God, $5. Sign me up. $650 for a set of four. Absolutely not. Do you want to know what ornaments do? Ornaments break. Do you know how many broken ornaments I've had in my lifetime? There was one Christmas, my mom used to do this thing. We had little mini Christmas trees in our rooms growing up. And every year she would buy us one ornament to put on the tree that sort of like represented our year or was just like meaningful. Like one time she got me a grilled cheese a grilled cheese ornament, but I had like a ballerina ornament. I had all these pretty ornaments on this little tree that I'd been having over time. And the plan was that by the time we were like 18 and we were moving out on our own, we would have all of these special ornaments that had meaning to get us started on our own Christmas trees in our own places. That was the idea. When I was, I had to have been eight or nine, uh, that tree fell off my dresser and every single ornament broke. Um, my mom did make up for it. She took me to the store and we rebought the ornaments that we could. So like I still have of those but that tree broke um that tree fell it broke ornaments break every year when i go to get all of my ornaments there's something that's broken because it got jostled around wrong or it wasn't packed right or while i have my tree up my dogs will just like run into my freaking christmas tree and stuff will fall ornaments break i understand there's some that are really sentimental and valuable and i get that but those are usually valuable and sentimental because they have a particular meaning to you and your family. I have ornaments from family members that are super sentimental and important to me, but it's not because I spent $650 on them from Dior. It's because they remind me of setting up a tree with my mom or doing something special. Like that's the reason it's special, not because you spent so much money on it. Not to get too deep, I know this is a pretty lighthearted video, but the fact that the Dior sells stuff like this, like this $650 set, they also have this $950 crystal set that's only three of them, but they're way more expensive because they're crystal. The fact that they sell stuff like this almost pisses me off a little bit because it, I know it's like the whole point of Christmas is capitalism to a certain extent. I understand that buying gifts even at all is a capitalist thing, but I just feel like taking something that's like supposed to be, maybe I'm, maybe this is just my family, but like ornaments are really special. We like save them from years. My mom has ornaments from when she was a kid. I have ornaments from when I was a kid. She, my mom has ornaments from like her grandmothers. Um, so the idea that like those types of things that are supposed to be very sentimental and special and 
they decorate your tree and look really pretty and it's supposed to be this like thing that you do that's like a family thing like decorating a tree i feel like the fact that they've made even that this capitalist shit show where it's like a thousand dollars for three fucking ornaments to hang on your christmas tree is just so bonkers to me the other thing is if you're rich you probably have a pretty big tree so what are three of these little ornaments gonna do? And if you're rich, you're probably doing like a, some sort of themed tree, I would imagine. I feel like that's what I see all the Kardashians doing is like fucking themed trees. So I can't really imagine being that rich and buying three of these. Do this, does it go with your theme? Does it not go with your, like, I don't know. What a three out of a big tree, this is gonna get lost in the sauce anyway. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking this. The ornaments have always pissed me off. I remember even last year when I saw those Prada ornaments, I was so annoyed. Cause I was like, that just means nothing. Anyway, um, that was my little rant about luxury holiday gift guides and gift giving. Make sure you let me know down below which one of these fantastic items you're gonna be buying for your loved one this holiday season. I would love to know what you guys are yossing or passing. <laughs> what are you guys splurging on this holiday season for your loved ones? Um, and yeah. I love you guys so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was a fun one. Um, I'm very excited about Glomus, so make sure you check back tomorrow for another new video. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my social justice spotlight will be linked down below. And yeah, hope you're having a beautiful December and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!